It's your girl, Dr. Jamila T. Davis, and you're tuning in for another episode of Social Justice in Action, where we bring community to the classroom. Hello, hello, everyone. How y'all doing tonight? We good. Okay, I feel the energy. I feel the energy. So I'm so happy to be here for another class of social justice in action. I had the pleasure to be in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm. And it's so funny because in Cleveland, they were talking about the issues that they are having currently with um, the high rate of folks going to jail for things that they didn't do. Mm -hmm. So we were talking to individuals who spent 20 and 30 years in prison and some of them had the ability to finally get out so as we begin to have a round circle uh, conversation about the issue we identified that the few that were able to get out it was because of civic engagement mm -hmm. right so one of the men was talking and he talked about how his mother started going to the meetings mm -hmm. and you know put the pressure on the prosecutor and ultimately it was that pressure that was able to bring his case back up in front of the people that be and he was able to get out so one of the things we were talking about in Cleveland I'm not going to give it all away because you guys will start seeing some of it in action was strategy and I was so impressed because, you know, I learn as you guys learn. I know a little something, something, but we've had some masters in the room really, really, really teach. So I was able to gather the information that we talked about and we actually put it into action. Right. So remember, Mr. Pinto and um, Professor Harris talked about strategy and that everything you have to figure out, what's your goal? What are you trying to achieve? So you got to go from backwards, forwards. What do you want to achieve? And then how should you do it? How will you strategically make your plan happen? Stoney, say hi to everyone. Hey. Hello. <laughs> it's one thing to go to a class and listen, but this class is all about action. So what did you think about the action steps that we took and how did it apply and relate to what we're learning in class, Stoney? Every time, every week that I've been in class, I've just realized that for one, that everything that I'm doing, someone has already done it before me, maybe a different way. So I think that helped me to continue to push harder because I know like this work has always been done. And now I feel like let's get a strategy together. Let's get a plan together. And just actually seeing it happen right in front of me in my city was like, this shit real. <laughs> like the process, it, it's all real. The process, the, the strategizing and having different people in position to help the strategy. So y'all, let's give it up for Yasante because this is another thing. Oftentimes, we don't know the problems, right? Now, we could provide a solution if we even knew that the problem exists. It, it takes someone brave to say, hey, this is an issue in my community. This is what affects me. And what better way for a, a high school student, right? I heard from an amazing 18-year-old today. Yasante, how old are you? I'm 16 years old. 16, right? 16 years old and say, this is what we need for our communities. Think about how many other schools in African-American communities or urban communities don't have science labs, right? How many? So could you tell us a little bit about the problem just so folks know a little bit more about it? What, what happens with your lab and are you guys don't have access to the lab for science? Could you tell us the issue? Um, because ASC is within a building that has four schools, um, we are very limited when it comes to um, a chemistry lab. What I got from the principal is that um, the only way we can have access to a chemistry lab is if we go on the fourth floor, and that's only if she and the other principal of that school comes in agreement where we can go up to accommodate um, those students who are using the lab. But um, from my understanding, not many uh, people want to go up to the fourth floor to use a lab. Okay, so you want to bring a lab to your school? Or at least the equipment you, um, that's needed to perform um, experiments that we can do. This is an issue that is concerning folks. So I'm excited, Megan, to see how we not only can help her, but how do we create a campaign that can maybe even turn into a national campaign to create change, because that's what this class is all about. What I wanted to share with that, in addition to, is saying, well, what are some of the resources we have in this room? 
where we can partner together and make that happen, okay? So what I'm hearing is, is there is a lack of access to scientific equipment into the school. So where are we at right now? We're at a university. Is there a way, is there anyone from that group that has or is willing to reach out to someone in the university and say, hey, are there, is there equipment that can be donated to the school? Is that, are we thinking about that as a possibility? Or is there a way where we could create some partnerships where students can come on campus once a month? I have a friend who's a vice president of a pharmaceutical company. Pharmaceutical companies, they make the most money ever, right? And it's all about science. So why don't we, or why don't you, in your campaign, um, what is it? Fi um, what's the pharmaceutical company that's here in Jersey that's real big that is a big deal, huh? Fi yep. And Merck, that's it, Merck, right? So guys, that's one of the ways that we can ask them to give back. We can ask them to give back with science labs. So I'll reach out to my friend, but you could also reach out to find out what kind of pharmaceutical companies would be willing to support and lend a hand to um, schools, not just this school, we'll start with this school, but um, create a campaign in and around science. So I want to talk about the power of manifestation, right? Write the vision and make it plain. Let me just explain to y'all, because I know y'all probably think I'm playing with you. You understand? I stay with a notebook with me, right? And every single day that I get up, before I do anything, I write down what I'm going to do for the day. Do you see it checked off? You see that, right? So let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you a secret. And somebody taught me this in high school. Everything I ever put down in a book has happened. Everything that I've ever written down that I wanted to achieve, it's come to pass, right? And as some of you guys know my significant other, right, we came together, and now we got this magical force. We put it down together. We have whole full, like, if you see the crib, you're going to be like, all right, you know what? A whole little easel with the, with the pads, and we write down the vision. What do we want? What is the goal? How many, what, what, how many of these do we need? How many of those? Where do we want to live? Where do we want to see ourselves? in the next five years, right? What's the financial plan? What's the action plan? What is the goals for our professional lives? What are our relationship goals? What do those look like, right? A lot of y'all don't have because you're not putting it in the atmosphere. Dr. Muhammad said, you gotta have no fear. How do you start action? You create a plan, right? So what he's giving you right here is the template for the plan. When you see it, you can be it. When you see it, you can achieve it. That is so very, very, very important. So as we walk into this assignment, I want you to understand that through the power of this universe, you are created to be a God on earth, right? He, God said, let there be light, and there was what? Light. He gave you the ability to do what he does. When he says, let there be, it is, right? So some of us, we got to get the faith up to be able to say. And you know how we get the faith up? We write it down. We write it. We got to see that thing. So sometimes for a plan for me, I got to inhale it. I, I, I got to meditate on it, right? I got to, ooh, I got to see that thing. I got to keep dumping it in my body until it comes to life, right? So that's exactly what you got to do. Write the plan. Make the vision. Make sure that it's clear. And when you write it down, guess what? You're going to start seeing the other things you need to make it happen. And more importantly, you're going to charge the, 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 the universe to bring you what you're looking for. So I got two questions for you. Will you dare to dream? And my second question is, will you dare to write it down? So without further ado, let's give it up for my friend, yeah. my mentor, professor extraordinaire, Dr. Bahia Muhammad. Give it up online, too. Let me see those emojis go up. I'm going to start today with um, giving you all an opportunity to let me know what you heard. We're going to talk about listening in action. It's very, very important for you to know your story and to keep it real with it. 
Most people feel like, oh, I got to shave that off a little. I need to make it look a little bit better than that because I'm making this amount of money now or I'm messing with this type of person or I'm driving this type of car or I feel like this is where I need to go. But fakeness breeds fakeness. If you are leading a movement and you're not keeping it real, you are creating a movement of expert fakers. At the end of the day, you do a disservice. Keeping it real will allow you an opportunity to use innovation, creativity, and collective action. We talk about social justice in action. Anybody could move. But think about that double judge rope, right? You got to wait for it to go up, wait for it to go down. You jump in. You got to move up to let somebody else jump in the back of you, right? And if you miss a move, if you're going too quick, if you're not eye to eye with the person in the front and the person in the back that you can't even see, you're going to fumble. So the first part is understanding your story. And then today we're going to get into who is a credible messenger? Are each of us credible messengers? If so, how? And how do we flip that script? Because a lot of the times they're like, well, if you ain't got no PhD, you ain't no credible messenger. You're not invited. You don't know what you're talking about. The research is up here. The people are down here. But in order to make it up there, you got to come down from a distance. If you send your people in, it don't matter. you got to come down to that kind of level. So we're going to talk about what that ultimately means so that you guys can get tools in your toolbox. What stood out to me the most was when you talked about how um, you, you told your husband that you wanted to bring the kids to the prison. Right. And that you felt crazy when you were thinking about it. And in that <laughs> moment, you felt like it wasn't attainable. And then you talked about how um, basically when you told him, although you felt like he was going to shut it down or say like you sound crazy, he actually embraced your vision and he also pushed you a little bit further and told you that if you don't go there and tell him that, Word. that you're not coming back with them. It just stuck out to me that you got to surround yourself with people who have the same vision as you and it is not afraid to push you. Because sometimes when you're strong-minded, others are intimidated and they feel like they can't push you or they won't push you or, you know, intimidation, especially Word. I know as a female, as a woman, is like, men sometimes feel like, oh, she's the brains behind it. Instead of supporting, they feel like they can't. So I, I enjoyed to hear you talk about the fact that he pushed you in, and he ultimately gave you an ultimatum because y'all in it together. <laughs> so, yeah. Word. He like, look, we done drove all the way up to West Virginia. You don't go in the building and holler at the warden after we drove six hours with kids. Whew. One you nursing, the other two just in the back, just loud. They don't care. It's a car. They having a whole good time. Like, and you got to make it there back safe. And... You're dealing with people that don't look like us. So yeah. at any moment, you could be pulled over and it could go down. Think, as you all are thinking about the leadership roles that you're going to go in, think about the people that are around you and look, put them in position. People want to work. My father always tell me, have them go get your bean pot. Keep them busy, bro. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who. It could be the individuals that don't like you the most. Give them a position. They're going to get to work. But you have to have that 360 degrees and think about social justice in action. Who wants to sit and watch you do everything? I'm giving everybody a job. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna just be the one doing it. I'm looking at what needs to be done. Look, you do that, you get the food, you take the pictures, you do this. Look, you the guard, you right here. Ba this, you cuddle, you pillow talk, right? So at the end of the day, when you put everybody in position, people feel wanted. They feel like they're worth something. When you shut people out and only leave it, it stunts the growth. It's just like people are standing behind you and everybody's just bumping up against you because you're not moving. At the end of the day, you have to keep it moving. And a lot of the times, even the haters, I give you the knife and I'll turn around and then take it out my back and give it right back to you. What's good? When you bless, you bless. Yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, it's kind of like, what am I going to be able to do? Teach my daughters that. Why they eight and 11 or my son, that's one right? Teach you how to move in a room full of vultures, period. It's serious out here. And when you have those eyes and when you can see it, where you've navigated yourself into Seton Hall, university, on this campus, you're in here for a reason. This is not a joke. This is just not a joke. And that can be life and death. And when I say life and death, the life and death of not only you, but your children and your offspring and your families and your loved ones and the people that you care about. Every word you write means something. Every word you say, it means something. Everything you look at and get that inclination in your heart and soul, something is in you that needs to come out. And we cannot be afraid of our dreams. What do you do when you do that? You turn it into a nightmare. This is not Freddie and Jason. 
This is not Chucky and all of that, right? It could be the beautiful dream that you want, but you can't be afraid of it. You can't demonize it. You can't take a blessing and then turn it into a shaitan, turn it into a devil, turn it into something just not good. Because when you're afraid of it, that's what you end up doing. You may not get the steps for your action right away, but if you listen and you pray enough, it will come. So when you're able to keep it real, it doesn't mean that you're putting your story on 21 Jump Street. Sometimes it means that you're just documenting and going through the movements just for yourself mm -hmm. so that you can understand your footwork. If you don't understand it, you can't teach somebody else. You gotta always, always, always know your story, share your story, hear yourself say it, and know that it is your story. Nobody can tell you how to go back and set, tell it. Nobody can tell you these sort of pieces, that this is how it should be, this is how it needs to be. Now they have a right to share their feelings, right? But you make the decision on what you wanna incorporate. The more that you know your story, the more that you can share it, the more that you can give pieces away to then empower other individuals to know that this is something that actually is possible. You can change the entire world just by one action that you do and just never even know. You could be sending an entire message to the world just the, by the way you show up, just by the way that you do things. That fear though is real and it comes when you're closest mm -hmm. to where you need to be. You gotta be focused out here in these streets. You gotta be focused. Cause the same way that you all are the movers and shakers and you have action, there's the action that goes against that action. There's always a negative to the positive. It's always those sort of pieces so you have to be focused in the midst of that action and movement. And a lot of that is going to be using your ears. You gotta understand the blessings that you have in the people around you, the people that came from you, the ideas that come from you, everything that you need, you have. You have everything that you need. Don't take it for granted. And it's, you gotta start with yourself first, and then once you go from here, it's gonna be all action, it starts moving quickly. You'll start seeing everything turn differently right in front of your own face. Social justice in action is accepting it. Don't make it seem like, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. I didn't just see that, that didn't just happen. I didn't just hear that. You ask for something and then it comes and you run from it. Grab it and run. If you gotta run, just grab it and run. It's action, we'll go with it, right? But just take that, because those are the blessings. When I interview some of the children, I interviewed them in the bathtub. One of the kids took me upstairs. I said, okay, we going to your room? We going up the stairs. They opened the bathroom door. I'm like, okay, well, maybe, maybe getting something out of the bathroom, we gonna go. Open the shower curtain, steps in the tub. So as a researcher, I wasn't trained for that. I said, this Neil, I real quick, and then I stepped in the tub. And I'm like, okay closes the thing, opens the cupboard where the towels and everything would be, got a pillow, and said, my mother was taking a bath when the feds kicked down the door and took her naked. Last time she saw her mother was when she was in that tub, and that's the only place in the house she felt safe, and she shared that with me. How dare I ever go and do something out here without giving my due diligence to that, that warrior. That was a warrior that I saw. Two of my most recent books, Daddy's coming home and mommy's coming home. I published these with the warden at the facility. Why? Because that's my social justice, right? That's the part where it's just like, okay, you at the facility and you doing this? I want to institutionalize these programs. I don't want no one-op and it's a one-time, let's do this book together. Now you could take the book on a book tour. We're going to go and we're going to talk about these sort of things. We put the blessings in and that piece is there. Now all of your pieces where this individual now is overseeing the accreditation for facilities across the nation and we just co-published, right? There were 40 different wardens from across the tri-state area that came in and saw the program that I brought into the prison. And they asked me for the position, the permission to do that and said, you know, what do you think about it? Is I said, oh, come on. This is what we're gonna be reading. I want you guys to jump in and engage in the dialogue. Look at what it ends up turning into. All of these different, you know, kinds of pieces. So think about those sort of pieces and make sure that you come up with your strategy as it relates to that. OMG, OMG. If you was blessed tonight by Dr. Bahia Muhammad, give it up. Yes, yes, and more yes, right? 
So as I sat in my seat and listened attentively to everything that she had to say, what resonated for me was have no fear. You are here. Have no fear. You, the real you, not the imposter you, but the you that's inside, right, that God created for this work is here. And this was so important to add because not only is she coming from the standpoint of an educator, she's coming from the standpoint of a revolutionary educator, right? So she had to go against the norm to create something different. My question to you today, those that are with us here online, those are in the classroom, how many of you will dare to make a difference. Because see, things that have you second guessing who you are, right? Isn't that what she spoke about? You'll be on the right path. And then as you said, uh, uh, um, Islam, y'all call it, we call it Satan, the enemy, y'all call it shoot, shaitan. Sa shaitan, okay, you know, will come and get up in your ear and have you go left when you knew you were supposed to go right. You'll start trying to mimic what someone else is doing because you think that they are successful. So instead of being yourself and adding your own twist that represents you, you'll try to be something that you're not. So now my question comes to you is, how is your authentic self going to show up in this work? And how is what you're going to do, how is that going to be revolutionary? How are you going to create the next most innovative thing that is going to change your community, right? So now we talk about our makeup and who we are. Don't you know that God created each of us to be different? Mm -hmm. what, would be, what would be creations if we all were exactly the same? It's your gift mixed with your gift, with your talent, with his gift, with mine. And we can come together and create something so dope and so unique, right? So over the next couple of weeks, because now we're getting to the action, we had a lot of lessons. We had some great, amazing individuals come into the classroom, and they're dope. But guess what? Some of y'all in this building, some of y'all online, y'all even doper. Will you dare to dream? Will you dare to bring the best version of you into this experience? So what's next from here? What's next is the game plan. We have a $5,000 reward. Up for those that innovate, that create, that dare to be different, that dare to do something amazing, groundbreaking. I want you to repeat, act to repeat after me. We are, we are change we makers. Are. We are change makers. We will make a difference. Now clap it up for yourselves. Thank you again. It's your girl, Dr. Jamila T. Davis, and you know what it is. It's going down.